Today I'm going to be taking a look at the recently released Open Indiana 2022.10. Open Indiana is rather unique, especially for my channel, because it's actually not a Linux distribution. This is actually a Unix operating system. Well, it, it's not. Unix, because of course the word Unix is trademark, the term Unix, right? But Open Indiana is basically our free and open source continuation of the old Solaris project. Solaris became Open Solaris, and then when um, Oracle bought Sun Microsystems around 2010, um, the Open Solaris project, basically some guys forked it, the community forked it, and created Open Indiana because they were worried that Oracle would eventually kill off Open Solaris, which is exactly what happened. And uh, this was also around the time uh, when Oracle bought Sun Microsystems. This is also when a lot of the Open Office guys forked Open Office and created LibreOffice for the same reason, because they were worried Oracle would kill Open Office, and essentially that is kind of what has happened over the years. So anyway, I'm going to take a quick look at Open Indiana 2022.10 inside a virtual machine. Today I'm going to be installing Open Indiana inside VirtualBox. I typically use Vert Manager for all of my VMs, but that's for linux -y reasons, because Vert Manager, uh, KVM, QEMU, it's better for Linux virtual machines. But because this is not a Linux operating system, this is a Solaris-based operating system, I, I chose to use VirtualBox today, because VirtualBox has Solaris actually listed in the options when you create a VM. So I'm going to go ahead and choose one here on the boot menu, which is Boot Multi-User. Next up it says uh, choose your language. Now there are in uh, alphabetical order so it's very easy to spot English here in the list. It's number seven. So that's what I'm going to choose. So we're inside the live environment which of course is the Monte desktop environment and we've got two different install icons. We've got install open Indiana. We've also got install open Indiana using a text installer. So I guess this is an older like in curses based installation. And if you want to do that, that's fine. You probably are going to have to manually partition your drives, though that's probably why they have Gparted here. So you need to use Gparted or a terminal application like FDisk or something to manually partition the drive to use the Incurses installer. But I'm going to use this installer, which I'm hoping is a simple graphical installation program. It is. It says, thanks for choosing to install Open Indiana. I'm just going to click next. No need to read that. Looks like it's going to automatically partition our drive. So the entire disk will be erased. I created a 25 gig virtual hard drive in this virtual machine. So I'm just going to click next on that. We need to choose our time zone. I am somewhere in the U.S. here. And Denver is too far over. What about... Chicago, I know it's usually somewhere here, and that's the central time zone. That's exactly what I need. So I'm going to click next. Uh, that screen is a little confusing. It's very hard to hit those precise dots on the map there. Language, English is the default, so I'm just going to leave that as is. Now let's create our root password. So the root password needs to be a strong and complicated password. Now let's create our home user. He's going to be called DT. His login name is going to be DT. Let's create a strong and complicated password for the DT user and confirm that strong and complicated password. Uh, the computer name, the host name, Open Indiana is little fault. I'll leave that. That's fine. I'm going to click next. Here is a summary of everything that we have chosen thus far. All that looks good. I'm going to click install and away it goes. This portion of the installation typically takes about five to ten minutes on my machine, so I'm going to pause the recording. I'll be back once Open Indiana has finished installing. And the installation has completed. That installation, that actually took quite a while. That took about 15 to 20 minutes for that installation to complete. So a little longer than my typical like Linux installations, but not terribly long. Now I'm going to go ahead and reboot the machine to complete the installation. And rebooting, it's loading some services with SMF. SMF is kind of your uh, init system. SMF stands for Service Management uh, Facility, I believe. Think of it kind of like uh, how SystemD manages services. That's what SMF in Open Indiana is. It says it's loading NVIDIA kernel mode, setting driver for Unix platforms. It looks like this is some post-installation stuff, I guess, on the first reboot. It's got to run through some stuff here. And we come to our login manager. Let me go ahead and log in. So this is Open Indiana. This is a very generic, vanilla-looking Mate desktop. And one thing I do want to say before uh, continuing with the video is Open Indiana is really not meant for 
to be a desktop operating system per se and as mainly a desktop computer user I don't work in IT I don't work with servers that's not my game I'm not interested in that game uh, a lot of what people would want me to take a look at with open Indiana is IT related and I can't do that <laughs> so I'm only going to look at open Indiana as a desktop operating system but I will say as someone that's been around for a while and I know a little bit about open Indiana and open Solaris before that and Solaris before all of that is some of the reasons why people especially in server and enterprise like things like open Solaris open Indiana is because especially many years ago it had a, a really cool file system that Linux just didn't have it wasn't av available on your Linux servers for example and that was ZFS now ZFS the licensing issues look like they've been straightened out now you've got Canonical and Ubuntu shipping uh, ZFS in its installer you can actually choose ZFS as part of the automatic installation process now so I think we've got that straight on Linux these days so that's not as big a plus these days for why you would choose something like open Indiana versus Linux the other big thing they talk about is the init system uh, SMF the service management facility how that was so much better than the old init systems and a service management tools you had on Linux prior to system D now since the rise of system D you know over the last decade or so SMF I would say also is not as big a a positive for for this in a lot of ways you know what st made uh, open Solaris and open Indiana stand out from Linux a, a lot of that stuff has kind of infiltrated its way into Linux either just we straight ripped off that stuff and not ripped off but like ZFS is already in Linux or you know we have tools like system D that do so much for us as far as a knit and services and things like that and timers and, and, and all of that just briefly I do want to go over the default applications that are installed out of the box here looks like they're gonna default to mainly the mate suite of applications so we've got the character map here which is very generic gnome character map 3.18.2 so that is an older version uh, probably they're using a lot of the older versions of the GNOME applications because by now GNOME has moved to the GNOME 40 series and GTK4 stuff which I don't know how any of that stuff would work on this open Indiana operating system we have a desktop search utility in grandpa which is your archive manager for zip unzip and things like that you have the mate calculator if I go to help and above this is mate calculator 1.26.0 back to applications and accessories we have our font viewer a search tool pluma which is a plain text editor you can think of this as an old fork of gedit and uh, gedit i don't mind so pluma is really not bad either so this is a small and lightweight text editor for the mate desktop environment let me close that up and also under accessories we have our screenshot utility and then we have this collection category which is our web browser the default web browser is going to be firefox the standard free and open source web browser that's installed on most Unix like operating systems out of the box. And Firefox is taking quite a long time to launch here. I gave this VM six uh, gigs of RAM and two cores of my uh, 24 thread CPU, so I don't know what the problem with Firefox launching was. It seems to be acting okay once it launches, but that very first time trying to launch it, that was kind of slow. Let's go to about Firefox. This is Firefox 102.5. ESR so that's the extended support release of Firefox also under this collection category we have the Mate terminal and we have Thunderbird for our email and our uh, calendar application let me launch the Mate terminal and see what version of Mate terminal this is 1.26.0 and you'll notice those three programs that were in the collection category are also pinned here as quick launchers then we have a graphics category not much to see here we have the image viewer and we have a color selection tool under the internet category we've already seen Firefox and Thunderbird other than that we have the Avahi server we have Pigeon which is an instant messaging application not too many people have the need for instant messaging anymore but if you wanted to you could add some kind of account pick a protocol here such as IRC probably would be the one that's most used these days XMPP is also here anyway you choose an account and you know away you go with your 
instant messaging, your, your chatting. Also under internet, you have Tiger VNC viewer. So this is of course, so you can connect to remote machines. So uh, again, especially for server use and enterprise use, that makes sense why they include something like that here in open Indiana. Under the office category, not much here. Um, oddly enough, they don't ship anything like LibreOffice, like a big bloated uh, word processor or anything like that. All you have is your PDF viewer and a dictionary application. Under sound and video, we have Brazero, which is a disc burning utility, CD Ripper, which is a CD Ripper, right? And then sound. So uh, Brasero is, is a fine application. This is actually an XFCE application, I believe, isn't it? Uh, pretty sure it is. No, this is uh, GNOME's disk burning application, uh, XFCE's disk burning application. It's called XF Burn, but I always get those confused. This is Brazero 3.12.3, uh, a very simple program to use for those of you that still burn CDs and DVDs. Also under applications, we have our system tools, which is the Kaja um, file manager here. So just your standard Mate file manager, not much to see there. Also under system tools, uh, a device driver utility. We have Gparted again, and not much else. Let me go ahead and launch Gparted here as root. One thing I did want to check out is what file system did it default to? Did it default to ZFS? It says file system type is Solaris. Now I don't think Solaris, the file system type, I, I think that defaults to UFS, not ZFS. I could be wrong on that. I, I wish I I knew that. I could probably look it up in the documentation. One thing I will say, the documentation on Open Indiana's website is not great. It's very light. Up here in the Mate menu under applications, we've already seen everything places. It's just your uh, bookmarks for the file manager. So if I click on any of the bookmarks, it opens the file manager at those bookmarks. Then we have the system categories here, and this is to change display, keyboard, you know, settings, look and feel, of course, your appearance where you could change some themes if you wanted, for example, a dark theme, which might be kind of cool to play with, a dark theme, although it looks like it messed up the panel there. I better go back to the uh, custom theme. Well, actually, going back to the custom theme, didn't, yeah, looks like I, I kind of broke it. Let's go with the Black Mate theme. I wonder if I log out and log back in, would everything be okay? Let me try that. Where do I go to log out and log back in? Log out DT. Yeah, still this, this theming is all off, unfortunately. So go back to the control center here. Displays, now appearance is what I wanted. Let me just click on these themes until I get something that I can actually read. This this one here, Blue Menta, we'll go with that. Again, um, this is not meant necessarily for a desktop operating system. You can use it as a desktop operating system, but that's not the primary focus of this. So, you know, if things are a little weird here, that is to be expected, especially from somebody like me checking it out. Let's see if it actually comes with any wallpapers at all. So theme. Let's go to background. This is just the standard default Mate wallpaper pack. Not much to see here. They do include the one open Indiana branded wallpaper, so I'll just leave that. Now let's open a terminal. I wonder if Control Alt T happens to bring up a terminal. No, I didn't think so. That's usually like a Linux key binding. I didn't expect it to work here. Wow, that is so bright. I wish they had some better color schemes here that I could choose from. Built-in theme, solar eyes, dark. Yeah, there we go. All right, let me zoom in here. I wonder if a uname will work here. So if I did a uname dash R, you can see kernel version 5.11. Of course, that's not a Linux kernel, right? Let's just do a uname dash A just to see what kernel we're using. Sun OS Open Indiana 5.11, Illumos. One thing you'll notice, we didn't have any kind of graphical package manager or anything on this operating system, right? There's no... Mate Software Center, GNOME Software Center, anything like that, right? So uh, I believe the package manager they're using is PKG, is the command line package manager. So I believe if I did something like PKG search and then name of application, I don't know, HTOP, for example, and it actually does return some results there. So I wonder if I could do a PKG install uh, HTOP here. Uh, insufficient privileges is sudo installed by chance let's see it is refreshing the catalog you know i think doing a, a sync of the repositories right 
And HTOP is finally installed. That took about two minutes or so for HTOP to install. It probably had to do with that syncing of the repository and you know, the, basically uh, doing a new cache of the package catalog there. Let's run HTOP. Let's see what kind of system resource usage we're using here. And it looks like it's using, oh, quite a bit of CPU. Much more CPU than I expected. I am not sure what's going on there. That is very unusual. Do I have anything really running up here? Network profile. I'm just looking in the system tray here. And I probably, well, I actually did log out and log back in. I was about to say maybe I should do a like a reboot, but yeah. That's pretty high CPU usage. RAM, also very high, using 4.5 gigs of the 6 gigs of RAM I use this. Now that could be due to the file system that it's using. Some file systems use more RAM than others. If that was an Xtend 4 file system on Linux, that would be... Uh, shocking. Now, if they are using ZFS, which can put the, all the RAM you give it to use, then that makes sense. But I'm, I'm a little concerned about that CPU usage. Let's see if I can figure out what is using the CPU. Uh, Xorg, the Mate terminal, and HTOP. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if that's an accurate reading or not. That that doesn't seem right though. Wonder how many packages are installed. If I did a PKG list, would it spit out? everything installed it will each on its own line so I could pipe that into WC-L assuming the word count program is installed that's WC right 1119 packages are installed via PKG I wonder if I could do a LSBLK to list the block devices no bash complains that LSBLK is not there it is using the bash shell though that was the next thing I was actually gonna run was a echo shell just to verify that we were using bash but we already know it's bash because we got the error message from Bash. One other thing we should mention is SMH, which is again your service manager, um, your system CTL, right? For those of you used to doing things with system D. Let me clear the screen. I don't know too much about this uh, service manager. I do know that everything is called SVC for service, I guess, and all the commands typically begin with SVC. ADM, for example, for service admin, and you can see I get uh, some help information about the commands I could use with the service admin command. And if I wanted to list all the services that are currently available, I could do uh, SVCS for services, plural, right? And it spits them all out on each on their own line. But I'm not going to spend too much time on that because honestly, I would have to read a little bit on the man pages for uh, SMF. So that's just a quick and cursory look at Open Indiana, the latest release, 2022.10. Now, I may not be the right kind of person to review an operating system like this, right? <laughs> because I'm a desktop computer user, right? I am not a server admin. I don't want to be a server admin. It doesn't interest me at all because I'm never going to be that in life. So, you know, uh, I've had people request me to take a look at this particular operating system that's why I did it today but do realize I was coming at this from mainly a desktop computer user not necessarily as a server administrator now before I go I need to thank a few special people I need to thank the producers of the show I need to thank Brian Gabe James Matt Maxim Mimic Mitchell Paul West Whitey Bald Homie Alex Armor Dragon Chuck Commander Ari Diokai George Lee Marstrom Nate Erjan Alexander Paul Peace Arch and Fedora Polytech Realities for Less Red Prophet Roland Stephen Tools Devler Willie these guys they're my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon without these guys. This quick look at Open Indiana would not have been possible. The show is also brought to you by each and every one of these fine ladies and gentlemen. All these names you're seeing on the screen right now, these are all my supporters over on Patreon because I don't have any corporate sponsors. I'm sponsored by you guys, the community. If you like my work and want to see more videos about Linux, free and open source software, and even operating systems like Open Indiana, subscribe to DistroTube over on Patreon. Peace. Either HTOP is broken or the CPU is about to melt.